let's get started. Today I will be using some craft twine. It's 150 meters and I got it from the dollar store. So if you look here, it says here it's a store in Canada and it's called Dollarama. So this spool of cord or twine cost me $3 Canadian. So really it wasn't very much to make this cute little purse. And the only other thing you needed was a button. So this twine is pretty flexible and it crocheted up pretty nicely. It was a little harder to do than yarn. And if you measure it, it's probably like a two millimeter cord. So this is how much I had left over when I was finished. So let's get started. We're gonna have a little bit of a tail to start, so about 12 inches or 30 centimeters, and we're gonna use that to tie in the side of our purse. So we're gonna start with a slip knot. I am starting with my five millimeter crochet hook. I did change it up a little bit in the middle of the project, and you'll see why as we go along. So let's start with a chain of 30. Try to keep it nice and loose. So this measures about 9 inches or 23 centimeters. So we're going to start in the second chain from the hook and we're going to go into that back loop of that chain stitch. So working in the back loop, we're going to put one single crochet in each stitch. So we're going to work across the entire chain and there will be 29 single crochet in our first row. So just take your time with this first row. It is a little difficult to get used to working with this cord. You can see on the bottom how it makes a nice finish when you go through this loop. So I will fast forward quite often through this video. You just have to pause to catch up. So row one will be the 29 single crochet. We're then gonna chain one and turn. So for row two, we're gonna go into the back loop only of each stitch. So starting in that very first stitch, back loop only, we're going to do a single crochet and we're going to do 13 single crochet in the back loop. So this is number 10, 11, 12, and 13. We're then gonna put two single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So starting in that first one, so this is an increase. So we're gonna put two in here. So there's one and two and then two in the next, one, two, two in the next stitch, We will then finish our row with 13 single crochet. So row two will equal 32 stitches. So 
and it should look something like this. We can then chain one and turn. We will now just work 32 single crochet all in the back loop, remember, one in each stitch for row three. So row three will equal 32 stitches. Moving on to the next row, we're going to chain one and turn. So we're going to do another increase. So this time we will start with 14 single crochet. We're then going to do our increase. So the increase will be two stitches in the next stitch. And then we'll just do two single crochet, one in each of the next two. So one in here and one here. And then we'll do the increase. So this will be an increase. One, two. And then we're gonna do 14 single crochet down the side. So row four will equal 34 stitches. Chain one and turn. We will do one single crochet in each stitch. So this next row for row five will be 34 stitches. chain one and turn. This time we will do 15 single crochet. And then we'll do an increase. And then two single crochet. So we'll put one here and one in the next. And we'll do another increase. And then 15 single crochet to finish the row. So row six will equal 36 stitches. Let's chain one and turn. We're gonna put one single crochet in each stitch. So row seven will equal 36 stitches. Chain one and turn, and we're gonna do an increase row again. We will start with 17 single crochet. We will then do two increases. So for the first increase, put two in this stitch, and then another increase, put two in the next,
and finishing the row with 17 single crochet. Row 8 will equal 38 stitches. Chain 1 and turn. We will now put one single crochet in each stitch. So row 9 is going to equal 38 stitches and we're going to continue this for rows 9 to 22. So for rows 9 to 22 each row will have 38 stitches. We will see you at the end of row 22. So you can see now how our purse is taking shape. If you fold it in half, how we will be putting it together, this is how our rows will be and we will slowly be decreasing the rows now to make the shape. So again, let's start with a chain one and turn. So we will start with 17 single crochet and then we're going to do our decrease. So this decrease is also called a two single crochet together. This is how it works. So we'll insert into the first stitch, pull up a loop, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. We have just put two single crochet together. Let's do it again. One, two, and yarn over, pull through all three. So this is a single crochet decrease or two single crochet together. We will just call it a decrease. We can then finish our row with 17 single crochet. Row 23 will equal 36 stitches. We will chain one and turn, and we will now put one single crochet in each stitch. Row 24 will equal 36 stitches. Chain 1 and turn. We will start with 15 single crochet. We will then do one decrease. And then two single crochet. So one. And then another one. And then we'll do one more decrease. So into the first, into the second. Yarn over, pulling through all three. And then 15 single crochet. Row 25 will equal 34 stitches. Chain one and turn. Let's put one single crochet in each stitch. So row 26 will equal 34 stitches. Chain one and turn. And this will be another decrease row. So let's start with 14 single crochet. We will then do a decrease.
and then two single crochet. So there's one single crochet, two single crochet, and then 14 single crochet. Row 27 will equal 32 stitches. We will chain one and turn, put one single crochet in each stitch, so then row 28 will be 32 stitches. We will then chain one and turn and do another decrease row. This time we will start with 13 single crochet. We will now do three decrease stitches. So going into the first one, there is our first decrease, and then our next decrease, and one more decrease. Finish the row with 13 single crochet. Row 29 will equal 29 stitches. Let's chain one and turn one single crochet in each stitch, so row 30 will equal 29 stitches. We can leave a tail again of about 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Cut your yarn and pull through. Fold your purse in half. This will actually be the inside of the purse. With your darning needle, we will stitch the sides closed. Close the sides together using the outside part of the stitch. So just going in the outside part, and then on the other side, the outside of the stitch, and pulling snug. When you have a look at your stitching, you'll see what a nice closed side seam it is. Beautiful. Be sure to make a knot, finish weaving, and cut your yarn. You can now stitch the other side the same. Once you are finished, you can turn your purse right side out. So let's turn it, and this is how it looks. Now 
We can now start the top edge and then move on to the flap. So start at either end, insert your hook and draw up the yarn. We will put one slip stitch at the end of each row. So just here at the end of each row, we'll do the slip stitch. So I just like to grab that last little loop from the end. So just going in there and doing the slip stitch. And at the end of the other row, it's very simple to see. So just in there and slip stitch. Again, just pulling that top loop and continue all the way around. So once you've reached back around to the beginning, we're going to continue with our slip stitch. So this time we're just going to go into the top portion of that slip stitch from the round below and do another slip stitch. So we're not joining, we're just continuing around. So just in the top section and slip stitch. And you can just continue these rows around until you have about four or five rows. So just to show you again, continuing the rows around and just doing the slip stitch. Really, you can make as wide as a band as you would like on the top of your purse. After you've finished your rows, we're going to place two stitch markers. We're going to put them 28 stitches apart. So this will be for the flap. It'll be at the back of the purse. So we want more stitches around the front. So if you look, we actually have 30 rows. So if you count all your rows here, there's actually 30 rows. So we want to just have 28. So just moving one row in on each side to have the 28 stitches apart. Place your markers there. So from here, we're just going to continue on, but we're changing our stitch. So remove your first marker. And now we're going to put a single crochet in here, but we're just going to work in that top loop as well. So let's do 28 single crochet. So working in that top one and doing a single crochet. I found my stitches were getting a little bit tight, so this is where I switched my hook. 
So I changed from the five millimeter crochet hook. I went down to the 3.75 millimeter and it just made it easier for me to get into the stitches. If you go down a hook size, just try to keep the cord as loose as possible. This is row one of the flap of our purse, and it will be 28 single crochet. So just removing our last stitch marker there and putting our last single crochet. We will chain one and turn. We are going to skip the first stitch of every row doing our flap. So row two will be 27 single crochet because we're going to skip that first one and go right into the next one, this time going through both loops. So single crochet in there and go all the way across 27 single crochet. And when you finish your row, you should be right on top of that first single crochet that you made from the first row. We can then chain one and turn, skip the first stitch, and then row three will be 26 single crochet. Chain one and turn again, skip the first stitch, row four will be 25 single crochet. So continue the decrease pattern as follows. I switch back and forth from my hooks from the big one to the small one. I'm ending up having uh, some issues with my finger here. This cording has been quite hard on my hands as well. Look at, I actually have crochet finger, but it did eventually go away. Oh my goodness. So once you finish the 14th row, which I've done here, we're going to chain one and turn. So this is row 15. So we're gonna skip the first stitch and then we'll do six single crochet. So this one is four, five, and one more for six. We will skip two stitches but we're actually in a chain three. So one, two, three, and this is for our button. So skipping two and then doing six single crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, 
and one more six. Before you go any further to finish the outside of this, we will be putting a single crochet all the way around. We want to make sure that that hole is big enough for your button. So just grab your button, make sure it goes through, not too loose because you want your purse to stay closed, but just the right amount of snugness. When you know the hole is the right size, you can cut your yarn and pull through. We can now just weave in our end down the side. We will now just put one single crochet all the way around the outside of the flap. So starting in at the very end here, this is the outside of our bag, and just pulling up the loop and doing a chain, and let's do our single crochet. So I just put one in the end of each row. So putting a single crochet in there, and then just kind of finding the right spot and putting your single crochet. And working around that corner section, I still just put the one single crochet all the way around until I reach the top portion, and then just the one single crochet in each single crochet from the round below. Once I reached my buttonhole, I just put three single crochet in that chain three space. And when we come back around to the beginning, we're just going to finish kind of like how we started on this side here. And we're just going to put it back into that first stitch there, and we're going to end with a slip stitch. We can then cut the yarn and weave in all of the ends. We can then attach the button. Just find center, attach it with any uh, cord or yarn that you have. 
my holes were big enough in my button to use this cord, so I just attached it with that and tied a knot. Look how cute this little purse looks. So now we can do a strap. For the strap, we're going to just leave enough of a start so we can attach it to our purse. This strap will be called a Romanian point lace cord. Let's start with a slip knot. We will then chain three. Single crochet in the second chain. Slip stitch in the first chain. Turn your work towards you a half turn. So now we will see this is the single crochet from the round below. We're going to go into that and do a single crochet. And then you'll see a little loop right here. We're going to go into that loop and that's where we will do a slip stitch. We're going to do the half turn and repeat. So here we go into the V right there. So single crochet and then into that loop, slip stitch, and a half turn. Let's do a few more. Single crochet, slip stitch, half turn. Single crochet, slip stitch, and half turn. Single crochet, slip stitch, half turn. Again, single crochet, slip stitch, and half turn. You should now see your cord coming along nicely. So continue for as long as you'd like your strap to be, whether it's short for a clutch, or for a handbag, or for over your shoulder. Be sure to watch the video to the very end, and thank you so much for being with me. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I look forward to more videos soon. Bye!